Season B2 has just started in Call of Dragons, which means it's time to spin the Wheel of Destiny, talk about the riches of the forest, talk about the end of season rewards. I'll guide you through what I think is the very best and more. So stick around in this video for some tips and tricks to get a sweet start in your new season. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Call of Dragons, and I'm hyped to be in a new season, and we're fighting against some old foes somehow. Yet again, we are up against MILF, the folks that betrayed us in a prior season, and I'm so tired of that drama, I'm not going to talk about it here. I'm done with it. I'm done with it, but we still get to fight them again. So, uh, it's going to be kind of a cool season all over again, and... Let's start with, if you're in the new season, what is some of the first things you need to go into? And hopefully in your last season, you started to figure out like, hey, what army presets do I want to use? What heroes do I want to level up first in the new season? All right. And let me just give you some tips and tricks if you're going into season B2 real quick. The heroes that I'm going to recommend, let's do it from the hero screen, is going to be Gorash and Skogel as an infantry unit to bring. I'm going to recommend Lillian Velen as a mage unit to bring, very obviously. I'm going to recommend Sin Frey for behemoths and for your marksmen. And I'm going to recommend an additional marksman unit that is going to be Hosk with Kanara. Now, if you prefer, I think that Hosk with Zeta could be really good. But the reason I'm not yet working on the new heroes in the new season uh, is that I'll, I'll get their skills to a good place over time is new unskilled up Zeta going to be better than a Max Kanara? I don't think so. That's my gamble. So I'm going to use Hosk with Kanara. And my final march is designed to do a couple things. First of all, I kind of want to have some calves going. Second of all, I do want to give myself the option of flying cavalry. And third of all, I wanted some versatile stuff. So I did Thea, who I could use with mages if I need to, and also Ferrandale. So I can get calves going and get my flyers going and get all my other stuff going. If you wanted, you could pretty easily say, like, look, Tohar and Burt's what I'm going to be leveling up, Chiskul. And I probably will stop leveling these two when I hit level 40 and then swap in the Tohar and Burt and just get them rolling, okay? So one of the first things you do is you say, all right, I'm going to go level up these new heroes in the new season, and you're going to go start smashing Darklings. Now remember, the higher level Darklings give more experience, so be patient, find the 36s. They give approximately the same prestige for different levels. So you can see this level 35 is giving you 1,600 prestige base. This level 34 is giving you 1,590 prestige base. Like, it's about the same. But there is an experience difference here of about 300, so higher level is better, more base experience. Now, one other thing that you're going to need to do before you go and you battle any Darklings, is you need to go and you get Renown, gain 10% more prestige from defeating Dark Forces and destroying Darkling Forts. This is very critical. One point over here, this is really a great accelerant to your growth. The Season Talents, I believe, are otherwise the same. I haven't looked too closely, but I think they probably are. Um, and under the assumption that they're mostly the same, like... The same sorts of builds that you used in prior seasons are still going to be good. I feel like Suppressive Fire was really outstanding. On the topic of experience, you're going to basically go kill a Darkling, and then you're going to go put Prestige that you're getting into War Studies and spread the word. Then you're going to kill another Darkling, and you're going to put more into War Studies and Prestige. Then you're going to kill another Darkling and put more into War Studies and Prestige. Do that incrementally as you go. We're going to talk more about policies, but... War Studies is going to give you bonus experience, so you don't want to kill all the Darklings and then spend your currency because you could have bonus experience, bro. Uh, and you also don't want to, you know, kill them all without having your prestige elevated per one that you kill. So these two things are the very first things you're going to rush. But let's get to the top here. From the top, you just wrapped up your season, all right? First thing you do, boom, you go in, you know what you're leveling up, you go in, you level them up, you're spending your currency, and now what? Well, now we can talk about claiming some rewards for the last season, all right? Now, if I'm going to go and rate these, if you won your last season, and you are a rally or a garrison, then you need to pick the three-star pet skill associated with your rally or garrison. So, if you're going to use the mages, Bert and Tohar together to garrison. 
Enduring Shadow Hunter is really, really valuable. That is your pickup, okay? Interestingly, if you use a Venom Lizard to rally in Garrison, this super infection is not very good, I find, because you're still limited to only one infection per second from the Venom Lizard across all the things hitting you. And so I found that I'm going to have 10 plus things hitting me, even in the open field, almost all the time. So I don't think I need super infection. And I also rallied with the Venom Lizard and Garrison with the Venom Lizard. Technically, for garrisoning, you get some benefit from super infection, but for rallying, it's just a dead skill, honestly. So I, I think that this is pretty skippable, which leaves only a couple things. The, the best things that you can have, I think, for open field are going to be sp split pain bloom is insane. You get triple damage, 3x damage on your sapphire. I d I've done this, okay? Instead of doing one bolt, I hit three targets, three bolts here, it's three pain blooms, okay? And I get the split p pain bloom is in the breakpoint for spirit, so good. I think that is a top tier choice. One of the very best. I mean, there, there are very few pet skills where you put that much multiplier on your pet damage. All right. The next best thing I think is Super Ravage. Okay, Super Ravage is what I'm planning to take this season. I'm going to drop it onto my rock, my night rock. And I think Sin Frey still are kind of the jam for Behemoths. So for the time being, that'll be a nice pickup. It'll be good with Sin Frey. I'll probably be using them for a long time, I would hope. I <laughs> guess we'll see. Uh, it kind of depends on these new archers, I suppose. And that'll be a really nice pickup. Other than that, I don't know that any of these, I would say, are really critical. I know people are really hyped about uh, the new Garrison potentially getting some benefit from Steadfast Chain Strike being a variable style heal. So that is possible. And I'm going to wait to do some testing on that and see if it does, in fact, work really, really well with, you know, the new Magrat Garrison. All right. I mean, this could be a really, really sick pickup. The weirdness is that we don't exactly have a great pet for Magrat right now. Like, it might also, strangely enough, be a Venom Lizard. I'm just not sure on that one. It, it's a weird spot for Magrat. I, like, I don't know what pet we're going to be using with her yet. All right. Some of these other skills, I think, are pretty cool. But like, I, I feel like the Snow Peak Rocks are really second rate as a pet right now. I do think there's some cool stuff you can do with Forceful Arrogance, uh, Forceful Exuberance as well. People aren't really doing a lot with the infantry shielding that like we sort of thought we would. So I would say Madeline really fell off a cliff in terms of value, Madeline Garwood. I feel like I'd rather have a Venom Lizard than a, uh, what's it called, Bruin Bear. And the reason is that the Venom Lizard has unlimited range, whereas you can get more damage in with a Bruin Bear, no doubt about it. But to do that, you have to be at close range with everyone attacking you. Otherwise, you're not going to damage them. So I just think that's kind of unlikely. Yeah. I, without going over every single darn one, which I've almost done, I, I think there's only actually three here that are super relevant. It's the Enduring Shadow Hunter, the Super Ravage, the Split Pain Bloom, and maybe Steadfast Chain Strike turns out to be Gangbuster, depending on the Magrat interaction. All right. Now, if you did not win your season, great news. These skills all freaking slap, they're insane. So if you have a pet that has moved all in on critical chance, and I've made videos about this, then Feral Bite is wicked. If you have a, a hero that cares a lot about generating rage, for example, Sinfrey loves rage, Outburst of Rage is very powerful, not as powerful in infantry, which also value rage, but they're going to get swarmed, and if they're getting swarmed, you're going to cap on rage anyways. Super follow-up, actually extremely good if you have split pain bloom. So, like, if you've got a really good Sapphire, this is really good, okay? I, I'm not actually a huge fan of Magic Pulse. This is a hero-enhancing capability. So, right now, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that. And Elemental Harmony, I mean, yeah, if you've got a... This is the, the Magic equivalent of Feral Bite, or Fatal Bite, rather. So, you know, if you've already got Super Follow-Up and Split Pain Bloom, and you, I, I don't know, maybe you could put Elemental Harmony on there. The only issue is that it's intelligence-based, so I don't know that you have the, the slots for an, another intelligence-based skill. So I would say my top prio are these three on the left, all right? So great choices if you win or if you don't win. Honestly, like amazing pet skills you can go and pick up, all right? So from here, 
there is the anointed artifact compendium. Now for me personally, look, I don't really need any more emblems for legendary artifacts. I have enough of them. So for me, this doesn't do much, but the selection of artifacts here is fine. I would say this is a place to spend gems if you are mid to high spender and you need legendary emblems because the chances are very low you're gonna get the artifact you want. Like I want a Mirage Orb. Literally every other artifact in here, except maybe Storm Arrows right now, would be kind of dead to me in terms of value. So I'm, I'm not gonna spend my gems here, but for a lot of people, especially in early seasons, this is major value, okay? Major value coming from the cost per legendary emblem. It's very low in terms of gems, but it's not nothing, all right? And you got lots of other places to spend your gems, which we're gonna, in fact, let's go over that now. Let's do the Wheel of Destiny, baby. So the Wheel of Destiny is how you unlock the new heroes at the start of the season if you wanna do that, and I do. The other way you're gonna get Magrat, I believe, is from the Strongest Lord event, which like, maybe you can win it and maybe you can't. So much safer to unlock from here. Now you can spend gems to go and get Destiny tickets, but if I remember correctly, I don't know that I need these. It's like, it's a toss up, especially if I plan to max buy the bundle. So let's just go and let's pick up some amount of the bundle and see how far we get and then decide what to do, okay? So the, are, there are a bunch of new bundles, uh, which is the case in a new season. The Blizzard Journey tends to be extremely high value overall. There's always one bundle that goes like here that lasts all season long and is generally very high value. There's also the Purchase Payback, which is showing up again. This gives you extra stuff for buying things that had gems, which is really nice. That's raw gems, not gem tokens. So for example, when I go and buy the great value bundle for the joy of destiny, which gives me my destiny tickets. That's how I'm going to spin the wheel. All right. Uh, I'm going to use my dragon tickets. I'll give you the link to that in the description of this video. It's an official uh, Legu and makers of call of dragons website where you can basically pre-purchase the tickets over here and they give you a couple extra tickets of value on top. All right. I use that for literally all my purchasing and I would never go back. In terms of value compared to all the other places you can, you know, get value in, you know, Google Play and Apple's App Store, it's just better, I, I found. So I'm going to buy that. And I think I want to buy this all the way to the $50 tier. And I'm going to pump the brakes on the $100 tier. We'll see how far we get. But you can see here, purchase payback, I've bought 3,000 raw gems. I guess its current progress shows it down there. I can claim that. Very nice, bunch of stuff on top. All right, and then the next tier, look at that, legendary Ascension Emblem, Poggers, claim that. All right, and I'm on my way to the, ooh, next tier, which I've completed, 10 G3 tokens, okay. Let's freaking go. All right, cool, oh, I claimed all of it. <laughs> that was all of it, folks. All right, Double Gems is refreshed as well. Unfortunately, Double Currency here does not refresh. Uh, I'd be so good if it did, but whatever. So now we go in and let's do some spins. We're going to hit skip. We're going to do three pointers at a time. And the way this works is you've got a low chance of getting a hero. But once you clear any of these slots, then your probability goes up for all the other things that are on the wheel. So our goal here is to get Magret and get Zeta. I already have Bertrand maxed. I already have Tohar maxed. So as long as I unlock Magrat and Zeta, I'm done. I'm good. I don't need Bert and Tohar personally. Both Bert and Tohar are fine. I do find that the older AoE mages, for me, were getting better results. Um, so your mileage may vary on them. Full Bert. Well, GG. Didn't need him. Hopefully one day that'll be worth something. The developers did say when I met them at the meetup in Cologne, Germany that the game plan was to give us something to do with excess legendary commander sculptures or hero sculptures. They're just figuring out like what is that thing still. We've got 16 spins less left. Feels unlikely to me that with these remaining spins, I'm gonna get both Zeta and Magrat. And the way it's going so far, <laughs> you know, I've gotten really lucky in prior seasons and uh, I'm, I'm overdue for bad luck. So there it is. There's Tohar. All right. And I can do one more spin. And I would like to get both Zeta and Magrat here. 
Now, there are also 12 G3s chilling on this wheel. So for 100 bucks, I'm going to get all the contents of the bundle. I'm probably going to get Zeta. I'm probably going to get Magrat. And I'm going to probably get these 12 Universals. Um, that's a lot of sculpture value, quite frankly. I could chance it that in the next 20 tickets, I get both of them. But at that point, I'm just kind of chancing it. Uh, with 40 pulls, I mean, I think... There's 60 prizes remaining. I'm probably getting it. So let's just do it. Bite the bullet. We buy the $100 bundle. There have been seasons where I don't need to. This is not one of those seasons. All right. And let's spin. I do hope they do something really cool, by the way, with excess tokens. Like, nothing busted, but I hope it's good. I, I, I hope it's good. So here we go. Even if it's a cosmetic, I think that'd be cool. Nothing there. Three tokens. Okay. Poggers. By the way, ooh, there's Zeta. Okay. We got our welcome, the Starfall Sniper. There it is. All right. Now, how many will it take to get Magrat? If I still have 20 or more tickets left, well, then uh, could have done it with the gems. Guess we'll find out. Guess we'll find out. But once you get them, by the way, once you get all of the legendary heroes, I think it clears the, the rest of the wheel for you, if I'm not mistaken. Let's find out. We are getting Magrat. That's like the one that I was most interested in unlocking because I can't get that easily. Okay, come on. Haven't done it yet. Oh, we did it. GG. Welcome. Welcome to the Smash Squad. And, yep, I had 12 left. So I needed to buy the bundle in order to get that done. I wouldn't have gotten it done with the 20. I needed more than the 20. Barely, but I did. All right, and it gave me everything else. And the rest of these get converted into gems, I believe. Cool. Very good. Now, by virtue of having unlocked heroes, there's two bundles. Legendary Trailblazer, very high-value bundle, because you get universal legendary hero tokens, okay? So I want to pick both these up. And I am saving my Universal Legendary Hero Tokens for a Rally or Garrison in a future season when, like, it's obvious it's going to make a really big difference. All right, up next for getting some value here is that possibly the new heroes, at least whenever you get them, at some point they will show up in your city. So I do see here's Magrat. So I want to give her some gifts. And I want to get her to I think level five is when I get the maximum number of gold heads, but we could hit the little info button to go and check that out. And I think you just, yeah, there we go. 17 gifts did the job. So you're welcome, Magrat. And if I hit the little info button here, you can see in the story portion, no, this is the dialogue portion. There's gifts to be had and Let's see. Oh, to trust level four, I guess. It's probably when you get all the dialogues. All right. All the dialogues. I got an emoji at least. But you get the trust level up there. You get some gold heads. Let me show you. We go over here. We chat with Magrat. And theoretically, you might want to actually enjoy the conversations. But I'm just going to click through them real quick. And I'll show you that we get some legendary tokens. I believe you get two, then three, then four legendary tokens is the way that works. Something like that. And that's a nice little boost of legendary tokens just for having these conversations, all right? Do I enjoy these? Not particularly. I just click through them. I'm not here for the lore. I know some people are. There they are. Two Magrat tokens, all right? So be sure to go in and boost their reputation here. Give those, give those gifts. I'm going to do the 17 gifts. Takes me over to level five. Sweet. And you can claim those rewards. Beautiful. I'll go and have those conversations later. You don't need to watch me do that. All right. Now, back to the events. There is the Riches of the Forest. The Riches of the Forest breakdown here is pretty sweet. Spirit Bone Torque, Mirage Orb, Gilded Crossbow. Both oh, the Storm Peaks just okay, but the other ones look friggin' sweet. And the Gilded Crossbow, this is the new one designed for Zyda. All right. What does it do? I'm going to show max attributes. It deals diffused damage every second to three legions within range. You can see it's just spinning around. The range is really large and it's hitting everybody. And it increases your march speed by 50% while the skill is active. It lasts for four seconds. 
and you do 1300 damage factor per target. This thing absolutely freaking slaps. And you get enemy hit point bypass up to 15%, 1.5% for your highest buff stack. So it's meant for Zyda. She has a buff stack. All right. And the effect persists until the end of battle. But the other legendary hero that has a buff stack, by the way, is Hosk. Hosk has a buff stack on his expertise. I think he goes to five stacks. It's a 6% buff. Every time you get a buff, you get a stack. So theoretically, just on Hosk, this could be very good as well. But I think it's obviously better on a Zyda March, all right? And you get even more hit point bypass. But this Gilded Crossbow just looks absolutely wicked. Better than probably any of the other legendary marksman artifacts in the game right now honestly so yeah i want one of these i will definitely max the forge of light for this it looks really bonkers and i'll probably will replace the rattle spear i guess i don't know i guess i guess i'll have to decide like when i bring zyda into the lineup now you can unlock this from the riches of the forest but the Ridge of the Forest is kind of like spending gems for artifact pulls, but you just get a better set of things you can pull from because you could get Gilded Crossbow, Mirage Orb, Spirit Bone, and North and Storm Peak. The issue with this event is that it's a, still a ton of gems for what you're getting. So I'm just going to wait a couple weeks for the Forge of Light, and there you can focus Gilded Crossbow. GG easy. That's the way to, to max that thing, all right? So that's my game plan. I do not plan to spend gems on this. If you are a Kraken, you can. But e even if the thing you're spending for is just the Gilded Crossbow, just wait for the Forge of Flight. <laughs> okay, so the reason to do this is if you're in an early season, you're a Kraken, you want a lot of emblems. All right, there it is. There is a 50% um, that you can do. And like, yeah, okay, I'll spend 50% and get one. Now, while we're here, now you can go into your store, you're in your VIP area, and switch to the new heroes if you unlock them. So I would strongly recommend doing that. I'm going to switch it up to Magrat because I'm going to be getting a ton of Zyda from Lucky Spins anyways, right? So I'm going to get Magrat from over here. Easy pickup, all right? And the other thing you can do is your store is going to completely reset. So obviously pick up your CP recovery and all these other things. I would not recommend spending all your CP on the first day. And the reason I would recommend not doing that is that there are, there are going to be things that your alliance is going to be doing. Like, for example, you'll get villages as you build places, but also there is alliance technology, okay, where you're going to be able to go in and get things like extra experience from battling Darklings, all right? So, oh, this increase experience gained by heroes from combat is that new is that is this pve and pvp either way i would wait till you have more war tactics until you start spending your cp potions because in the very least 10 percent more experience is really nice all right but you can make your choice there okay this is the alliance technology let's talk about some individual technology choices so let's get a look at these policies all right We've already talked about how you're going to max out war studies and spread the word as fast as you can. After you've done that, you want to spend the least amount of points possible, I think, to make your way over to administrative excellence. This is going to give you an extra warrant. The other thing you can do if what you care about is your ability to do a lot of damage when you go and you fight elite behemoths is you would, in that instance, want to max out military expansion pretty quickly. All right. The other thing you could go and do is work toward marksman drills, because obviously marksmen are what you're going to use for behemoths, and try to get a little more damage that way as well. But for the most part, other than a little bit of optimization of my marksman damage and my behemoth performance, I'm going to be gunning for administrative excellence over here as well. Just get pets going as fast as I possibly can, because they're so important in this game. From there, you've kind of got some interesting choices. And there's a lot to review here, but the biggest new thing is that although we have cursed swords, and I would recommend this honestly to pretty much no one, even if you have like a billion power, I don't know, maybe if you're a billion, you, you, maybe if you're a billion, you go for cursed swords. But I would recommend that you get a close look at this governance direction here. There are three things. You choose one. The, the first option is benevolence. 
50k elixir production, 10% more prestige gained. Theoretically, this could be interesting early, but drops off in value later when, like, you don't need prestige anymore. <laughs> so once your use for prestige is maxed, this does nothing for you. It's just there for the elixir production, okay? The one that I will pick is probably Reprieve. Reprieve, Reprieve gives you 20,000 daily elixir production, not much, but it reduces the healing cost dramatically, and I found myself healing like a million troops a day. So to cut the cost by 25% is huge. So I want that cost reduction majorly. And this gives me another 500,000 of daily resource healing. So yeah, I want that. It also gives me 10% more merits gained, which is pretty cool. I'm interested in that as well. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I don't care about the merits, honestly. Like it's neither here nor there. Merits, you, you get like, I know you need them for the shot, but you're going to get plenty if you're fighting, right? The next choice is insane, and it is healthcare diligence. Now, this makes your hospital work like Rise of Kingdoms, where your hospital capacity is now limited. Your hospital capacity is 1.5 million troops. And when you have more severely wounded units in your herbalist hut than your care capacity allows, those severely wounded units who exceed the limit will die due to lack of care. So this is a huge downside. If you exceed the limit with more severely wounded units in your herbalist hut than care capacity allows, those units will not immediately die. However, if you remain above the limit, any further severely wounded units will die. So TLDR, you do not want to exceed 1.5 million troops in the hospital if you take this. So that assumes you're going to do a ton of healing. And like... I might take this. Like, I'm going to have to look at this and really understand it. But it gives you 3% march speed. Instead of a 25% resource cost reduction, it is a 15% resource cost reduction, which is nuts. And your daily resource healing quantity or limit is increased by 2 million. Woo! And your stamina limit goes up by 50%. So the whole point of this is that you basically are going to resource heal like crazy. Like this is making resource healing more important. I feel like a part of the magic of this game is not having to worry about your hospital overflowing. That is not a fun aspect of Rise of Kingdoms. I also feel like at 1.5 million troops, you, you have some room here to work with, a lot more than you get in Rise of Kingdoms, okay? Now, the difference between this and Rise of Kingdoms is, well, you're not limited to how much healing you can do in a day in Rise of Kingdoms. You literally do as much as you want. So will the 2 million extra limit over here, plus the maximum that you can typically do, which is 3, 3 million, so 5 million a day of resource healing, be enough? And will you be disciplined enough to just stop fighting otherwise so you don't get dead troops? You have to be. You have to be. I think diligence might actually be the play. If, if for no other reason than the resource cost reduction of an extra 25% is insane. That's so much resource cost reduction that that alone might be worth it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, but these two are where I'll be looking, okay? We'll get there at some point in the season. There is also March Speed Boost, which of course is very valuable, all right? Along the way, you've got this decision point. Do you want to increase your elixir production or your, um, let's see here. Wait, what is this? Oh, this is further increase elixir production speed. So daily elixir production. Oh, okay. This is based on a fixed amount and this is based on a percentage of your troops. For most end game players, the percentage of troops is just going to be way better, I would assume. And then down over here, further increase daily resource healing at your... Uh, okay, resource healing, either a flat amount or percentage. I think percentage is going to be the way to go. For, for me, certainly, that's the way to go. And uh, getting that maxed out is going to be pretty important. You will notice there's not a whole tier of like resource cost reduction that you got in the prior season. I think the way you get that is from your choice all the way at the end over here. So this is a pretty major choice. Like it is a big deal. <laughs> don't have all your troops die if you don't know what you're doing. Oh my God. Wow, wow, wow. What a disaster. And that I think covers the majority of things you need to know about 
what's in here. This is this is some powerful resource cost reduction. Like I am going to be looking very seriously at that resource cost reduction. Very seriously. It is it's very very significant. I, yeah, it's very significant. There is another decision point over here. Let's get a look. Increase your elixir capacity at your herbalist hut or increase elixir production speed. Yeah, I think production speed is the way to go. For sure. You end up in these really long fights, and the production speed is it's got to be the pick, uh, at least for an endgame player. And then over here, increase your stockpile days or increase your daily resource healing based on a percentage of your total troops. Look, I found that I had the stomach for like a million in resource heals per day. So I'm going to say that like probably going for stockpile days is pretty good. I don't know. I guess I was doing two mil a day on some days, wasn't I? Based on my stockpile. Stockpile days I used in the prior season, it basically makes it so that when you max this out, you can get like an extra one and a half or two days. Yeah, it's two days of resource-based healing saved up. So normally you could do like one day of resource healing, whatever that daily production is for you. But this makes it so you could do three days. And you've accrued that over time. It was a very cool thing. Maybe I can show that to you. So there is also that decision point, which, I mean, how much, I, I don't know how much extra resource healing I'm going to need, given that I'm already going to have a ton of resource healing over here. I'm, I'm going to run out of resources, honestly. And like, I have troops to train at some point. <laughs> I can't, I can't burn all my resources. So the 50% reduction looks really good. These two are going to be, this is going to be a very important question for, for how your season is going to go in the end game, for sure. All right. I feel like I've covered that pretty in depth, but just to show you in the hospital over here, if I go to the resource side, I hit the question mark. It's not showing me the extra resource days, but in the prior season, there were like bars showing me how much of my prior two days I had resource healed. Um, and you, man, like two extra days of resource healing is like, you can be bursty is what I'm trying to say. Now the daily limit though is still 3 million, but that policy increases it by another 2 million at max. I can't do that much. I'm still only 660,000 at the start of the season, right? But like through boosts and whatever you would normally have, you can get to a max of three mil plus the extra two mil on that one policy would be kind of nuts. Does that cover pretty much everything you need to know to get a good start in the new season? I think so. You're going to have to go in and set your talents all over again. I personally kind of hope that this whole song and dance of leveling up and setting talents is something we move away from in the not too distant future. There hasn't been any plan announced for that, but I personally found that... I think I'm I'm ready to be done with leveling up heroes all over again, personally. Uh, the first couple times I was like, all right, but it's, you know, like the fifth or sixth time is like, yeah, the novelty is worn off for me. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. All right. I'm hyped for the season. Subscribe. We got fighting in zone two, so it's going to be fast. It's going to be furious and uh, might involve a lot of resource healing, apparently. <laughs> Yikes. Until next time. You have fun smashing the kingdom. If you're looking for some guidance around pets and pet builds and what to do with your pets in the new season, pardon the end screen. Check that one out. It was a pretty important video.